David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. I have said this several times before, but one of my favorite things about the fountain pen hobby is making new discoveries. And a great place to make new discoveries is at a fountain pen show. While at the recent San Francisco pen show, I made such a discovery, which I talked about briefly in my recap video, and that was Scogsy Pens. It was nice to see them have a decent amount of inventory at the beginning of the show, and by the end of the show they had completely sold out. So it was a successful show for them. I purchased one of their pens at the show and wanted to give you a closer look at it today. That pen is the Choya Micarta. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Choya, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about the pen, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Skogsy Pens is currently based out of Arizona, but in the very near future, they will be moving their operations to San Diego. Uh, Skogsy is the last name of the people behind the brand, which are Zach and Amy Skogsy. Zach got his start with fountain pens just a couple of years ago when he was gifted one. Um, after wondering if people still really used them, uh, he quickly realized that there was a vast world of information out there about fountain pens. After diving headfirst into the fountain pen world, in the spring of 2021, he began creating pens himself to match his own ideal shape and size and aesthetic. Uh, Zach and his wife Amy turned their pens by hand, so every pen is a custom piece. So, let's take a look at what I picked up. This is the Choya in Micarta. Uh, Choya is the name of a cactus found in the southwest part of the United States. Uh, it is sometimes referred to as a jumping choya. Uh, check this out. This is what the barbs on the spine look like. Uh, if you brush up against that at all, these barbs will latch onto you and a piece of the cactus will actually break off, almost like it jumped off the plant to attach itself to you. Uh, and as you can imagine, removing one of these can be very painful. Uh, this pen is made from micarta. Uh, micarta is a composite of resin and typically linen, but it can also be made with canvas and paper and fiberglass or even carbon fiber. Uh, micarta is actually a registered trademark, but has become what is called a genericized trademark. That's when a brand becomes so popular or significant that it becomes a generic term for similar products. Think of it things like a Kleenex or Q-tip or a Xerox machine. Uh, Zach has even talked about potentially making his own micarta from scratch so he could offer the material in a wider variety of colors. Um, I like micarta as a material. I own two micarta pens that I'll show you during the size comparisons. Um, overall, this is not the largest pen in regard to length. It's about the same length as a Sailor Pro Gear 2, which is a little bit longer than the standard Pro Gear. Uh, but the pen is a bit more girthier than the Pro Gear. Um, let's take a look at the top of the cap. It is flat. I like how the cross section gives you a good look at the layers of resin and linen in this material. The cap angles up and then straightens out for about the last inch. Uh, there is no cap band or exterior branding on this pen. Uh, there is an extremely small step down from the cap to the barrel. Something I was impressed with was how Zach was able to line up the material between the cap and the barrel. Uh, with micarta, the material isn't going to be a perfect match in the transition, but he did a great job on this pen of getting it a very close match. The barrel almost immediately begins to taper down to the end, which like the top of the cap is flat. The cap twists off with a single rotation, and underneath there is a standard number 6 Yovo stainless steel nib. Uh, since these are essentially custom pens, I believe you would be able to get just about any standard tipping size with your order. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a slight flare and then angles up until you reach the threads and a step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, this is a rather girthy section, and I like that. It fits well with my personal tastes. It's nice to see a rather thick section on a pen which isn't overly long. Now, this material has a tendency to be a bit hygroscopic. Uh, over time, you might see it darken from the oils in your hand, and while inking, you might see the section darken a little bit. I wouldn't call it staining, it's more of just a darkening. Uh, if you clean off the section with a damp tissue, then that discoloration can be minimized. But on a pen like this, that kind of coloration change over time really adds to the character of your individual pen. This material will tend to change looks over time. 
Uh, this pen is long enough to comfortably use unposted. While the cap fits onto the back of the barrel, it isn't secure, so it's not designed to post, which is fine. Now, I know that there is a significant cost for smaller manufacturers to have their nibs stamped and a quality engraving tool can be pricey as well for those just starting out, but it would be nice to see some kind of branding on the pen so folks would be able to identify who made it. Now, micarta doesn't lend itself to engraving on the material itself, but it would be nice to be able to identify the pen in some kind of way. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Uh, with the linen used in this micarta, I would be apprehensive about eye-dropping this pen. Uh, it might have a potential to cause stains as the ink is absorbed into the linen from the inside where the material is untreated. Currently, the only place you can purchase a Skogsy pen is through their Instagram page. I'll put a link to it in the notes below. Uh, or you could search for it. Skogsy is spelled S-K-O-G-S-Y. Um, I paid $250 for this pen, which is a reasonable rate for an artisan creation. That's in line with what other similar creators are charging for their work. Um, I like this pen a lot. I like the unique looks and the material. I love the thicker section and it feels great in the hand. And I like the attention to detail given in order to have the material match up from the cap to the barrel as close as you could expect. Uh, Skogsy is still a very young company. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how Zach and Amy grow and mature in their creations. It can take a while for a newer company to find their groove and uh, discover what it is they do best. I look forward to seeing their journey and what they come up with next. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Skogsy Choya Micarta. I just wanted to give you another look at that material, especially how that lines up. To get that to line up like that every time uh, is rather difficult, so I appreciate that. Uh, in regard to some size comparisons, here it is with a uh, Narwhal Nautilus. And then here it is with a Sailor Pro Gear. Uh, this is the uh, Shelby edition or the Cobra edition, which was available at Gold Spot. I believe they still have some of those available. Uh, and then here it is with a Diplomat Arrow. And then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Delta Dolce Vita Oversized, a Platinum 3776, that is the Chartres Blue, and then finally here it is with a Lamy Safari. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the 3776 from Platinum, and the Sailor Pro Gear, and finally the Lamy Safari. Here we go with the writing sample for the Skogsy. And this is the Choya Micarta. This is a medium stainless steel nib, and the ink that I'm using today is something relatively new, which is Diamine Master of Puppets. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, it is a nice kind of darker purple with a greenish sheen to it. Uh, Diamine came out with a rock and roll series of inks that is available exclusively to the German market. Uh, you can buy it through some German retailers as well as through Amazon and a couple of other places. Uh, but any ink named after a uh, Metallica song is something that uh, I had to add to my collection. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Monteverde's Blueberry Muffin. Uh, and then it's very similar to Colorverse Andromeda. Maybe a bit of a darker purple, but it's very similar in that regard. And this is what the Diamine 80 milliliter bottles look like. You can see it says Master of Puppets. Uh, they also came out with a uh, uh, Hell's Bells. And so uh, that's another ink that I picked up later that I'll have to show you. 
And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I find that this medium Yovo nib is tuned very well. I mean, you're not going to get a lot of line variation. You can be a little bit out of here. But for a medium nib, uh, I find that it's fairly smooth with a decent ink flow in regard to some reverse writing. It is a little sharp, but it does lay down a nice extra fine line. And then in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up well. So there we have the Skogsy Choya Micarta. Uh, like I mentioned before, I look forward to seeing what Skogsy comes up with in the future. And I've been very pleased with this pen. So it's well worth checking out. Until next time, thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you later.